Sechs Versuche, Le Mans sollte. Chacon is scoring. Versuche, Le Mans is not getting a free trip in those exchanges in the corner at all. The attitude going into this fight is that here are two guys that don't like each other. They have met previously three times, each of them having won a split decision, and one of them under California uh, rules ended in a seven-round technical draw. So over 27 rounds of boxing, they are all even. Boxing Council Super Featherweight Championship. Rafael Bazooka Limon defending against Bobby Chacon. In the turbulent world of boxing during the 1970s and 80s, few matchups ignited the passion of fight fans quite like the epic battles between Bobby Schoolboy Chacon and Rafael Bazooka Limon. Their rivalry transcended mere competition, embodying the essence of raw determination and unwavering courage inside the ring which ran over four brutal contests, the fourth being the pinnacle. But who are these men and why are they not talked about more in the world of boxing? This video today should hopefully give you a new profound respect for each man and why the fourth fight was such a classic. But before we dive into that night in 1982, it's important to go over each man and how their ferocious rivalry came to light. First up, let's take a look at Bobby Schoolboy Chacon, a moniker earned during his early days in the sport, hailed from California with Mexican roots himself. His nickname, Schoolboy, reflects his initiation into the professional boxing world while still a student, testament to his tenacity and drive to succeed both inside and outside the ring. Before Chacon even came across Limon, he was truly proving himself with impressive wins over Castillo before going on to face the legendary Ruben Olivares, only to be knocked out. However, he would get revenge a couple of years later, and after this defeat, he would come back and defeat a future world champion and town rival Danny Little Red Lopez. John Thomas watching it. He is about ready to stop the fight. He is stopping the fight by a knockout. The only way looked up for Chacon until facing Limon for the first time. Raphael's initial victory over Chacon left him swollen and reeling a testament to the Mexican's prowess as a counterpuncher, losing the first encounter. Chacon remarked after the fight, saying, I thought I was fighting a bum from Mexicali. Limon earned his nickname Bazooka as a tribute to his explosive power and unyielding aggression, qualities that rendered him a formidable presence within the ring. Not only that, being a southpaw while living up to his Mexican roots, made him a very tricky opponent. The champion comes forward. Good punch underneath and he's got him. Left hook, completely changed course. Choi was winning it all the way and then the bazooka got his guns going and it was all over. His moniker of Bazooka also was a nod back to his days serving the Mexican army during the 1970s, where he discovered his innate talents for boxing, albeit in a more visceral and destructive manner. Despite initially venturing into the sport as a mere experiment, Vimon quickly recognized his natural aptitude for the sweet science. The build-up to their second meeting in Los Angeles was fraught with tension. Chacon publicly questioned Limon's courage and the Mexican fighter defiantly responding with anger. However, this would end in a technical draw after Limon suffered a bad cut due to an unintentional headbutt, with both men not fully satisfied with the result. Their third meeting, dubbed the Grudge Fight 2, epitomized the animosity and mutual disdain that fueled their rivalry. From watching the fight, it definitely looked like Limon won this one, as he was pressing the rounds for the majority of the fight and pushing Chacon back, while his battered face told the story. Look at Chacon's eyes, both eyes cut. Bazooka Limon knows he won the fight. 96, 95, Chacon! Oh, that's terrible, that is terrible! 95, to the winner, split decision, bring on our play! Well, I've been wrong before, folks. 
But I wasn't wrong tonight. The local boy, Bobby Chacon, they just stole one for him. Once again, the controversy around this fight created a begrudging respect between each man, recognising the other's role in shaping their destinies. And despite Limon's disappointment, he found himself fighting a year later for a world title, knocking out Venezuela's Befelmi to become the WBC Super Featherweight Champion. For Chacon, on the other hand, he was having a much tougher time outside the ring. His wife Valerie, who he had three children with, begged him to stop fighting, as she couldn't handle the scars and aftermath of each battle he would endure, something that would significantly impact her mental health. He can't eat, he can't be a husband very well, he can't even be a father at times, because he's always in training camp, training hard, can't do this, can't do that, gotta follow all the rules, boxing's a, uh, got a lot of restrictions, it's just like a wife too, and uh, my wife was jealous of that. His wife, eventually committed suicide as she couldn't bear to go through the aftermath of each battle Bobby would find himself in. But Bobby Chacon didn't listen just then. He was preparing for yet another fight. So while he went away to yet another camp, Valerie stayed home in the back hills of Butte County and according to friends and relatives became increasingly depressed. She sought professional help but it didn't work. Nothing did. I look at those pictures, I see her smile. I see her doing something, I see her by her horses, I see her with the kids, I see her hugging me, holding me. <laughs> I cry right now. <laughs> so much I miss her. Shikon would continue to fight even the day after her death, paying tribute to her after his victory. The next day, the very next day, Shikon was back into the ring. All advice to the contrary, he wanted to now fight more than ever. This fight was for Valerie and $6,000. There was talk that Bobby Chacon was so tough, he'd lost his emotion. Must have been a state of shock or something. You know, I just had to go through with the thing. In fact, it wasn't until he eliminated Juan Salvador Ugalde that it seemed reality set in. Finally, there were tears. And instead of a championship medal or belt, something more meaningful. His brother brought to the ring Valerie's wedding band and put it around Chacon's neck. Bobby Chacon thinks the fight to forget what happened will never be over, but there have always been other fights in Bobby Chacon's life, the ones in the ring, the ones that have bells, the ones you get paid for, the ones that bring pain, the kind of pain you expect to the body, not to the heart. That year, he would get the chance to win the world title once again in his fourth meeting with Limon for the final time. One win for each and one draw. The final fight would determine who was the best and would all come down to a battle in Sacramento. My analysis coming up is a culmination of their epic saga and rivalry in the ring, each driven by their own demons and fueled by a burning desire for supremacy. Let's go into the strategic madness of Chacon versus Limon on December 11th, 1982. In round one, Chacon sets the tempo by applying pressure, while Limon opts to counterpunch. Schoolboy takes the more aggressive stance compared to their previous encounter in the last fight, utilising his jab effectively to control the distance, landing crisp backhand shots. Arturo Colo Fernandez, the trainer, as Limon gets Chacon, asserting his authority early, awakens Limon's fighting spirit. He exploits Chacon's lack of head movement and upper body movement with precise left hand strikes down the center. WBC rules, 10 point must. Population around the Sacramento and San Joaquin Stockton. As the round progresses, both fighters engage in a spirited exchange of wide looping power punches, leaving an impact for what is to come. In the first round. Scheduled for 15. can still move. Does he still have the good wheels? Are the legs still there? Once again, Bobby comes out swinging, aiming to push Limon back with his aggressive style. However, like I said, the lack of head movement leaves him susceptible to Limon's hard right hand counters and left straights. Oh, 
Despite this, Bobby's timing proves to be his saving grace as he catches Limon with well-timed counter right hands, momentarily stunning the Mexican fighter. In response, Limon presses forward, unleashing a barrage of punches. Chacon employs his slick defensive movement which we know him for, trying to evade Limon's attacks, waiting for the right moment to strike back. However, with Limon doing this, Chacon was able to capitalise on his opponent's aggression, using his wide looping punches against him, timing him with a beautiful left hook and right straight down the middle. The momentum has shifted again. Another right by Chacon. Another right by Bobby. Bobby's resilience is starting to shine through, and his strategic counterpunching has turned the tide in his favour. And Chacon covering and at the same time absorbing punishment suddenly rose up and fought his way out of the corner and took the play away. There's the left hand right there that rattles Chacon in the corner. Now watch it. Out he comes with a right hand. And another right hand just short, but he kept throwing it. And he landed at least four solid right hand blows to the head of the champion at one good solid body shot. Following an initial shaky start for Shukon taking some big punches, he regains his confidence and relentlessly pursues Limon, utilising his jab to set up his right hand and displaying excellent feints. For Limon, he needs to do something different and it's evident when the two are on the inside, he's the bigger and stronger man in these positions. And with Shakon pursuing, it reminds me of the famous quote by Sun Tzu, to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. Step back for a moment and then let go of Flurry. Now he taunts Shakon a little and brings the right hand over the top. Shakon nails him with a hard right, but Bazooka comes right back with a straight left. And they're going to give Bobby Chacon an eight count. Chacon is able to land the right hand. However, no defensive action after, while also squaring up, leaves him unbalanced and right in position for Bazooka's left hand. In round four, Limon capitalises on his newfound momentum from the knockdown, utilising his southpaw jab to dictate the pace and push Chacon back. And, when he got into range, employed a relentless body assault, forcing Bobby into the defensive. Chacon tries to counteract this by using bobbing and weaving along the ropes, as he patiently awaits the opportunity to counter Limon's advances like in round two. The right hand, uppercut, got in. Chacon blinks, he needs to get out of that corner because Limon is letting him go. It's a calculated game of cat and mouse, as now it's schoolboy luring Bazooka into a trap with feigned vulnerability. Then, in a flash of brilliance, the right hand strikes, catching Limon off guard as Shukon urges forward once again, seizing control of this tremendous battle. Shukon needs to get out of that corner. Does with a right hand and staggers the champion with another right hand. Bobby, however, weathers the storm, countering effectively and keeping Limon at bay. The round ends with a clash of heads, typical in orthodox versus southpaw encounters, resulting in a nasty cut for Shukon. And due to what happened in their second meeting, and Shukon already being down in this fight, he does not want this to go to the scorecard at this early stage. The result, Bobby Shukon is bleeding on the interior near the right eye on the nose. It's a cut on the nose just toward the right eye. And it looked to me like the buck may well have cost him. 
Bobby starts the round much more aggressively again, but targeting the body of Limon. And they're all even, and I've still got them all even. Hopping the right hand into the face. Chacon digging the left hand into the body. He would have this kind of a run at him in the early going. Despite the setbacks in this fight so far, Chacon showcases improved defensive skills, opting to evade Limon's jabs and lead hook by employing strategic footwork, taking small shuffles backwards, making Limon throw at thin air. While also offensively, Bobby does a great job in positioning himself to land his effective combinations, getting the outside position versus the southpaw, going to the body with hooks before going up top with the right hand. And he wants it again. Good left hand by Chacon on the side of the head of Bazooka at the end of round five. Schoolboy finishes strong, landing the more significant blows, and the momentum has turned back in his favour. In round six, Chacon maintains his momentum, utilising feints to set up devastating combinations, capitalising on his newfound rhythm. The fight is very close, give or take a point either way. Our 130 pounders, Bazooka Limon of Mexico City, Bobby Chacon from Oroville, California. Bobby is landing the more impactful punches, leaving Limon visibly fatigued while also employing superior timing with accurate strikes in between, as he continues to frustrate the Mexican with his footwork sliding out of range and making him miss. Fight with it. See a little bit of the blood running down, but no bother to it. Not so far, for Bobby Chacon. Another right followed by a left to the head of the champion. Another right hand by Chacon. At this point, something needs to change for the Mexican once again, and Limon adopts a more aggressive approach in this round, utilising his southpaw jab to try push back Chacon and target the body. Romero, that is into this fight. That sharp right hand of Bazooka, back to the right. Bazooka lands some powerful left hands while getting himself in the outside position now as the southpaw, right down the line on Chacon's head and body. Limon then gathers momentum and traps Chacon in the corner, and just when you think Limon has got his hand on this fight, Chacon retaliates with precise strikes testing Limon's resilience. Now it's Limon who starts playing possum on the ropes for some reason, taunting Chacon to come to him. 40 seconds to go. Bazooka proves his chin is made of something else. Good left hand, good right hand by Chacon. The champion just wailing away and then Bobby Chacon bristled up to fight his way out of it. And eventually it was the champion that broke off the exchange and moved back out into the center of the ring. Halfway through the fight, both fighters look tired and beaten. Surely this can't go 15 rounds. We go to round eight. Both low. Limon is targeting the body of Chacon with left hooks, while Bobby continues to press forward. Despite displaying signs of fatigue, both fighters refuse to relent, showcasing their unwavering determination. Stone comes back to the left and the right. And now it's the champion taking a hard right to the jaw on the rope. 20 seconds to go in round eight. This is the biggest round of the fight for Bobby Chacon. However, out of the two, it's Limon who looks like he has nothing left in the tank. 
before trying to land one big left hand or right hook bomb. In round 9, Dracon appears rejuvenated compared to the previous round, demonstrating fluid movement and offensive prowess. Schoolboy manages to push Limon on the back foot and set up his right hand. This is Limon's neighborhood. I've been here. Bobby Chacon moving more and better now than he was in the first four rounds of the fight. For whatever reason, Chacon favours playing possum again, looking to bob and weave on the ropes, waiting for the right moment to counter Limon's wide attacks. At this point, Shikon is on the hunt for the finish, and the crowd at this point is going crazy, shouting Bobby's name. Hold on! You see him reach out and try to grab Shikon. Now he's shaking it off a little bit and starting to move. He's taunting him. Hard right hand by Shikon. Another right hand by Shikon. Another right hand. Hard right hand by Bobby Shikon. 20 seconds to go. Gazuka Lamont's in trouble. He's about to lose his mouthpiece. He almost went down on that exchange. I don't think he knows who he, where he is. Chacon pressing the fight, and there's the bell, mercifully, for the champion. Somehow, Bazooka survived the last round at this point. He needs to show something, or Shurkan is going to finish him off for good. Bobby's energy is feeding off the electricity of the crowd as they wait for the right moment for him to take out the Mexican once and for all. Limon, though, is true to his nickname. As seen in round two, Limon is called Bazooka for a reason. And right into the face of the chance. seat of his pants. Bobby bounces up but he was stunned. Bobby got too confident leading with the right which had been landing all night. Nevertheless he got lazy and failed to take a step back or roll after the punch and with no defensive action after throwing it left schoolboy feeling the full bomb of the bazooka. Regardless Shikon took it very well and like so often in this fight the momentum is very much like a seesaw and although Bobby is winning the fight this knockdown by Limon has made it that much closer, and you can tell the confidence is back for Bazooka. He needs to get out of that corner. Each time he has been trapped in the corner, he has absorbed punishment, and then suddenly would come winging out, and normally it's been the right hand that got him out of trouble. Now he gets out of there. He even sets Shikon up with a quick pull of the shorts, only to catch him with a counter right hook. With five rounds left, anything can happen. Cone being hit by that left hand at the slow motion and he comes storming out for round 11 and scores with a combination to the head of the champion. As the fight enters its championship rounds, both men show signs of fatigue, trading blows relentlessly. Shakon targeting Limon's body effectively. while Limon utilizes his strength on the inside. This is what makes Bazooka Limon so tough, because he has such endurance and he can punish you in the late round. However, it's Khan that is landing the more precise counter punches, once again asserting his dominance. Bazooka looks tired. At the beginning of round 12, the cut reopens and the blood is flowing in Shikon's face, both once again displaying incredible heart and determination. Limon is employing his flicker jab to disrupt Shikon's rhythm coming into range. While Bobby continues to land powerful right hands, with both fighters refusing to back down. Left. We'll return with more of ABC.
ABC's wide world of sports after this word from our local station. Between rounds, they were concerned about the cut on the nose of Chacon working diligently on it and the doctor, Montemayor, came over and had a look at it. In round 13, despite Chacon's apparent lead in the fight, the fact remains that he has been knocked down twice, underscoring the importance of these final rounds if he is going to be a world champion again. With the ringside doctors monitoring his cut closely after each round, there's a lingering concern that this fight could be stopped, and there's no guarantee the decision would favour him. As Chacon enters the crucial round, there's a sense of urgency to his movements. However, Limon remains a relentless force, a recognition that he must seize the opportunity to secure victory, pressing forward and landing punishing left hands. Bazooka's strategy is clear, to drive Shakon back against the ropes and capitalize on any openings. Both fighters refuse to yield ground, showcasing remarkable willpower and determination. And in this pivotal moment, it becomes a sheer test of grit and resilience, with each man vying to land the decisive blow. Yet, amidst this intense back and forth, it's Shakon who appears remarkably more composed and energetic, pushing back Bazooka, demonstrating a renewed determination to finish off the fight on his terms with the crowd behind him. Somehow, Limon has survived again. The fatigue has set in for both men as they continue to trade blows, each refusing to concede an inch. The crowd are on their feet, and Chacon is still looking to capitalise on the Mexican's fatigue, while Limon summons his remaining strength for one final push. And despite the gruelling nature of the contest, both fighters remain determined to claim victory. In the final round, the tension reaches its peak 
as Limon's corner appears to consider stopping the fight, and Shikon's corner observing Limon's exhaustive state. They sense this may be the final opportunity to clinch the title. Bobby is employing feints, head movement, and strategic angle changes, tactics he should have utilized earlier in this bout. The whole crowd has erupted into a frenzy, rallying behind Shikon with a thunderous chant of his name, anticipating a moment of greatness. A ten round split decision. The cleaner, more precise blows now belong to Bobby Shikon. And the tenth round. There's the right hand, and another right hand by Bobby Shikon. And a hard left hook by Shikon. Leading from the nose since the fourth round. A cut caused by a butt. Meanwhile, Limon presses forward, attempting one last time to assert his dominance to maybe secure victory on the scorecards. Left hand by Limon, and now Bobby Chacon gets out of there. Less than a half minute to go. Before Chacon comes up, of the moment of the fight. In the display of sheer determination and skill, Shikon executes a flawless uppercut right hook combination with just 20 seconds remaining, stunning Limon and seizing control of the bout. And despite the punishing blow, Limon somehow managed to rise to his feet, displaying his resilience that has defined his career. As the final bell rang, signalling the end of the grueling battle, both fighters acknowledge what they have just gone through. Limon, bloodied and battered, acknowledges Shokan's victory as Bobby basks in the adulation of the crowd, knowing he has left everything in the ring. He's done it for him. He's done it for Valerie. Has it 141 to 140, and the other judge has it 142 to 141. That's Angel Guzman. All in favor of the new. He's a world champion. Here's what Bobby had to say after the fight. Around here, as you can see, I don't know if our cameraman can get to him or not. But Bobby, congratulations. Bazooka made a mistake. He came to my old town. I did the scoring and they did the punching. Oh, don't talk to me about punching. I've never seen anybody throw so many punches in my life. Oh my God, Shay, but here I am, 31 years old. How can a person that old throw that many punches? I just wanted that thing. 22 years old and I threw it away. I had to get it again. And then uh, this is dedicated to my wife. She couldn't wait for me. But I'm told, Bobby, that you've gone through the toughest training period of your entire life for this one. For you, Bobby! Well, yeah, I went to L.A. to be with my, my trainer, Joe Ponzi. I knew he'd get me in, tra in training. I couldn't do it here. There's no southpaws. And I just had to get in shape for this one. Bazooka me fought three times, and he has gotten better. No doubt. I thought you were going to get him back in the 13th. Well, that just proves what his heart has grown. He's fought some good fighters. I hit him like that before, and he was looking for a hiding place. I hit him like that tonight, and he didn't care. He was coming right back. He shook it off and came back. The cut came from the butt, did it? The head butt? Oh, we round. bumped heads a few times. Yeah. Uh, it must have. I really didn't say that was a butt. I was going to say, stop the fight. I'm a, yeah. you know, like he did right. that second time. But... Bobby, you're the toughest guy I've ever seen. Congratulations. Damn it, I want to win. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank okay you. baby. Good to see you.
Bobby Jacot, who lost his wife uh, earlier in the year while he was engaged in a fight. He went ahead with the fight, and he's gone ahead with his family life and keeping his farm up in Oroville, California. An incredible fight from Sacramento as Bobby Chacon beats Bazooka Limon for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. After enduring 42 grueling rounds of blood, sweat and tears, the journey these two warriors undertook to reach the end is nothing short of remarkable. As Barry Westgate reported, I know this from what I watched Saturday. The real victims are the survivors. There's nothing in sport that can be more brutal than this was. The WBC super featherweight title fight between Rafael Limon and the challenger Bobby Chacon. For blood sport, it was a classic. It was a bloody, murderous, shreddering battery that must have left marks that will never be healed. Their bond transcended the brutality of the ring, leading to an unexpected friendship after. Bobby even extended an invitation for Raphael to come to his home for dinner, showcasing the camaraderie forged in battle. Bobby's fighting spirit persisted, as evidenced by his reluctance to retire despite numerous attempts, as the Los Angeles Times reported. Chacon has never been very good at retiring. He tried it about four times and it never worked. Even when his wife threatened to commit suicide, he couldn't quit. Even when his wife committed suicide, he couldn't quit. Bobby didn't learn from the past and decided to fight on, going on to get a great win over Boza Edwards before moving up in weight to try become a three-weight world champion fighting Ray Mancini, who defeated him with ease. He did finish his career though with seven straight wins, but at what cost? After finally retiring, his life took a tragic turn. What happened to that money? About a million dollars in two fights. I lost a million dollars. If you weren't broke, would you have retired? Yes, I should have. I wish I, wish I could have one dollar asked me. We could have made it, but I didn't want to. He was in financial ruin and lost all his money while losing his son Bobby Jr. to gang violence before eventually he found himself in skid row recycling bottles and cans to make ends meet before being diagnosed with dementia. A terribly sad ending for a man who poured his heart and soul into every fight. Despite his troubles, he still found a way to give back. The boxing program was created for him. Created by Pastor Ray Ramirez at a Baptist church school in Los Angeles. So we began the boxing school. Ramirez, who had sparred with Chacon as a teenage amateur, found him living on Skid Row and felt he had to do something to restore the dignity of his one-time hero. He has some kind of damage, but has a sense of humor still. Yes, he does. <laughs> I do. Yes. <laughs> I forget. Uh, <laughs> you know uh, what I forgot? What? I forgot. <laughs> forgot what you forgot. In contrast, Limon was never quite the same fighter after this, but he would pave the way for the likes of Hector Camacho and Julio Cesar Chavez. Limon would eventually retire, and despite having 23 losses from 70 fights, most of his faculties seemed to be in place. During his boxing career, he was much more disciplined with his lifestyle, avoiding things like alcohol and drugs compared to Bobby Chacon, and he often attends WBC conventions while has been seen giving guidance to the younger generation even still training himself. Overall, the Battle of Sacramento epitomizes the journey of boxing, marked by triumphs and tribulations through relentless determination and unwavering perseverance alongside the scars it leaves behind. These fighters deserve so much more respect for putting on such a show, and it was rightly given the fight of the year in 1982 by The Ring magazine. For me, this goes down as one of the greatest fights of all time. And it's just a shame it doesn't get recognised nearly enough as some other classics. Hopefully this documentary has given you a new profound respect for what each man gave to this sport we love so much. If you want to find out more about them, I recommend you check out my video on the Ferocious Four. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts on Bobby Chacon and Raphael Limon. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next one.